Hello, hello everyone, our dear listeners. Hello, Doug. How are you today? Good generic time of the day, Sebastian. I'm I'm well. How are you? I am fantastically <laughs> well. As I always say, this is our 62nd debate, something like this. The debate today is being head of state has nothing to do with expertise, but everything to do with entertainment. Uh, we had a little bit of a discussion about what entertainment meant. So I think it's a broader definition of entertainment, including being a good communicator, uh, not just entertaining for the sake of uh, amusing the, the public. Um, so it's just a broader sense of maybe being more shallow than deeper in terms of technical uh, knowledge of what it means to be a politician. So the flip of the coin has decided that I will defend that motion, that heads of states are more entertainers than experts, and you will defend the opposite, that they are experts more than entertainers. That's right. So you will start this debate. This is where the flip of the coin has also decided this this flip of the coin is, is becoming like this god. Like Every time we refer to it as if it's like this external entity, this algorithm deciding the fate of our lives, the fate of this podcast, the fate of everything. Um, maybe that should be another debate. Should we just leave all decisions to the flip of the coin? <laughs> the almighty flip of the coin. You go for your two minutes. Heads of state have nothing to do with expertise, but entertainment. You're against that motion and you get started with your two minutes starting now. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Let's briefly review what the duties of a head of state are. Chief of state, chief executive, chief administrator, chief diplomat, chief legislator, chief of party, chief citizen, commander in chief. Now, granted, that varies based on the country you're talking about. So the list I just gave you is the kind of duties that presidential systems typically ask their heads of state to fulfill. But maybe you know that the absence of a chief entertainer here. So now Sebastian will tell you that this is only about communication in the end. Winning attention is just the first step, right, to further an agenda. And why, you might ask, is there anything wrong with that? Uh, here's what's wrong with that. Being an entertainer at a nationwide level means mostly one thing. You play by the rules of a massive media apparatus. But isn't Trump famous for bitching the media, you might ask now? Yes, and believe it or not, this is part of the act. Actually, no one, no one so far in the history of US presidents spent as much energy in playing to the media apparatus. Not through press conferences, but through spending time engaging with the, the press. So what is the problem with that? Well, you don't have time for anything else anymore. So basically, you play to an apparatus that's fueled by horse race journalism, which is essentially sports journalism. So who is against what? Who is winning the race? Who is further ahead? Who is uh, falling behind? These kind of things that are not substantial, not talking about issues, but actually talking about who's ahead. Or you're playing to a desire for drama. So you're creating conflict where none was, and that's distracting at best, and it will keep you from doing your actual job. So the question is then, who is doing that job? Option one, no one is. Option two, somebody else is. And in both cases, this is really bad. So that concludes my first two minutes. In my next segment, I go deeper into why it's important to have some expertise and what that expertise may be. But I maintain... You should be expert first and then entertain and not the other way around. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. Oh, how cute. Heads of states should be experts and not entertainers. What a wishful thinking. Unfortunately, you're describing what a unicorn world should look like. The fact is, heads of states today are comedians, they're entertainers. And you can look around and you've mentioned them. Trump has no political experience. And I'm glad that he, things are looking so good for him for 2020 re-election, not even being uh, sarcastic here. Bolsonaro in Brazil, Duterte in the Philippines, Salvani in Italy with his extreme fascist messaging. Thankfully, expertise resides mostly with the cabinet, with the government, and also mostly with the administration not the central figure at the top of the state who is really there to shake hands and perhaps, hopefully, one day again, 
set a vision, a general direction, which does not exist anymore nowadays, by the way, for better or worse. I'll explain why better or worse. The big visions of the 20th century, as I mentioned in another debate of ours, uh, were things like socialism, like liberalism. Now, these were good or bad visions, but there were visions. Nowadays, you have nothing for the past few decades. So the thing is, the heads of state are really visionless today. So they're nothing more than, indeed, as I'm saying, shakers of hands, huggers. It's not inherently wrong, by the way, that it would be about entertainment, even if the word carries a negative connotation. After all, after all, messages need to be repeated over and over again, so the policies are in the end properly understood by the general population. Politics, in the end, are essentially about communication, which I liken to entertainment. Unfortunately, it's often the case that those big comedians at the heads of our states end up being mere clowns. An implanted hair orange, non-self-made, lying racist, stupid blob who avoided paying hundreds of millions in taxes, managed to make it to the White House. What more do you want? We had a debate on whether it's worth it to have a Trump regardless, but the point here is that inevitably heads of states are buffoons trying to entertain us on purpose or entertaining us because they're just so dumb. So yes, it is a fact heads of state have nothing to do with being experts, but they're just entertainers. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. So yeah, you're describing a status quo, Sebastian. No dispute here. Obviously, right now, the clowns and entertainers are running states. That's, that's not to be disputed. I give you that. The question is, is that a good thing? The question is, is that maybe a recipe for disaster? And that's what I really believe. You keep coming back to visions, by the way. There is a, there is a famous quote um, given by Helmut Schmidt, who was a chancellor in Germany. And he said... If you have visions, go see a doctor. And that's actually a very fairly accurate quote because he was famous for studying up on his on his craft. He was a student of history. He read biographies. He engaged in conversations with uh, with the smart, intelligent people of his time. And this is literally what heads of state need to be experts in. Heads of state are presented with options to make decisions on. If they would be just clowning around and we would take away that decision power from them, hey, fine, let's make them entertainers and give them their own TV show. I'm, I'm fine with that. But the fact of the matter is they are being asked to make decisions. And those decisions are often recommended by so-called experts, but often they are contradicting decisions. Uh, they, are, they are options to pick and choose from that you can make better if you know a thing or two about the subject matter, about the historical context, and you studied enough that you can understand the consequences of your decisions. Now, if you're mainly investing your time in being a clown to the masses and playing to a system that uh, values drama over, over substantial discussion, yeah, if you invest that time in there, that time is missing someplace else. And what I tell you, and we ca we can watch this in the next decades going down that way, uh, having clowns as head of state is a disaster for economy. Uh, economies is a disaster for world peace. We will have our fights in the next years. We will see uh, economies collapse. And that's because the head of state has decision power, but doesn't spend the time studying up anymore, but does spend the time being on rallies television, tweeting, and having meaningless fights with celebrities somewhere in the public. And that's just not positive and good invested time. That's just stupid. And yeah, so I do say uh, you need expertise to run a state. And if anything, you need an expertise in how, um, at least to have expertise in how you manufacture consent and get things done. And that's another field where current heads of states that famously play to the masses are not really good at. The Trump administration is a really good example. The kind of things they want to get done, actually, they get done very little. Yes, it looks big and uh, Trump sells it very big uh, on his rallies. But in essence, it would be so much more he could have gotten done if he would know how to do things uh, and how to manufacture consent and, uh, and agreement in his parliament, in the government, in everything, every agency that's involved. He simply does not care and does not know. Therefore, he's not getting anything done. You, we can argue if that's a good or a bad thing, but it's the truth of the matter. If you invest your time in entertaining, you're not investing it in anything else. 
And the job of a head of state is actually everything else. And now on to Sebastian. I'm sad that uh, you mentioned uh, this uh, joke, this quote about vision, because if anything, German chancellors after the Second World War have been such proponents of this great vision that I feel is not shared widely enough, not believed in, it, in, in enough by its people that it's targeting. And that's the European Union. That's a great thing. That's a great vision. Except now, look at what's happening. People are tired of technocrats. They're tired of these experts. It's not exactly my cup of tea that people react this way, but it is a fact of life indeed. So you may point out the risks, but the thing is you can't just live in your ivory tower and say, oh, I wish it were that way. The thing is we are just individuals among many others who are voting for a system that is that way. It doesn't have to be about drama or being clowns, by the way. Uh, As I said, entertainers can be also understood in the sense of repeating messages over and over again. I see, indeed, a head of state a bit like a CEO. Uh, The CEO is not the one doing the work. He's trying to keep the ship together, going in the same direction, and repeating the the message of what is trying to be achieved in that country, in that company. You cite Trump as someone who keeps entertaining and not getting anything done. I disagree. He's, He's done things. Actually, whether I like it or not, he has actually achieved things, such as trade deals. You know, surprisingly, his hard stance on the on the countries has yielded results. He's negotiated different deals with Canada, with Mexico, with the EU. He's setting up this trade war with China. What will come out of it? So he's actually managed to do things, uh, surprisingly. So all his rhetoric may sound very extreme and too much on the t- on the tweeting aspect, but it actually has come to results. There's controversy on Kim Jong Un. Also, this summit with North Korea never ever had a U.S. president met with the dictator of North Korea, whether it actually uh, allows the, there's some recent allegations that North Korea has kept a secret uh, 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 missile bases, 12 of them, just a couple of days ago. So let's see if there, has, there, has, there are any, any results. I'll make you laugh with my last minute here. But the, the way I'm trying to make you laugh is actually quite serious behind the scenes. I've always been interested in politics. Now look at my situation. Uh, There's three reasons why I have no chance whatsoever. And this has exactly to do with entertainment, communication, and image more than expertise. I can be the best expert I want to be. I can have the best message in terms of the content of what I want to deliver, the politics. But I have a foreign name by French standards. So already half of the population in France is xenophobic, will never vote for me. I live in Switzerland. So if I come back to France, I will be perceived as someone who has fled to another country, Switzerland, what's more, which is considered a tax paradise. And thirdly, I work for an American company and French and Americans don't really like each other and Google is perceived in a specific light. All this to say that it can sound funny, but even though I'm interested in politics and I would actually run for elections, I have no chance whatsoever because all this is about is about image and communication and entertainment and nothing to do with the actual message I would have to deliver. It's sad, but it's a fact of life. So that's why being the heads of state, being the chief in whatever party that exists is about entertainment and not expertise. Unfortunately or fortunately, it is the way it is. Final statements. Dirk goes first. Trump's successes don't hold much water. You actually, you actually cited the main example right away yourself. The things he di- he discussed with Kim Jong Un just are not turning out right now. So he blew up two sites. That's what Trump keeps telling everyone. And now uh, intelligence comes in that he created actually uh, increased capabilities and potentially 12 other sites where he has, uh, where it's uh, it's being said that he has rockets in there. So basically Kim Jong-un didn't change even a little bit. He's continuing doing the same stuff he did before. The only difference is now Trump tells everybody that the, the, the danger is over. So people are inclined to not watch North Korea anymore. And everybody else around it, China, South Korea and what have you are now trading with North Korea and starting to loosen up the embargoes and what have you. So in the end, North Korea will have have the bomb and uh, have first strike capabilities to the US. Oh, yeah, 
that's one of the successes. Not going any deeper in here, just saying one thing. If you focus on entertainment, then there is only one state on this planet where you can get to the highest, uh, highest place in the state, and that's the US. The US famously elected uh, actors, and right now Trump. So they, they elect people not based on qualification, they elect people based on who can play to the masses. That's different to all the other countries around there if you're not a dictatorship that is and even if you're a dictatorship then your expertise in is in knowing how to wrangle your cabinet and your parliament so i maintain i'm sorry if you if you want to be head of state and a successful head of state actually doing something good then you better be more than just an entertainer you can be still an entertainer but that's not your main qualification <laughs> Sebastian. At the very least, the expertise of running a state, as I said, lies in the administration and the, maybe in the government as well. So the head of state is just one piece of the entire paradis of the state. And this is why the vision aspect is so important, because if you pay attention to the vision, to the general direction, you will see what distinguishes a scary, dangerous clown from someone who's indeed an entertainer or a communicator, and it does not have to be uh, with a negative connotation. Brazil, the Philippines are democracies, but I'm sorry, the guys that were elected to be heads of state, Bolsonaro and Duterte, are quite extreme, right? Not to say fascists in the way they handle politics. So if you listen to their vision, despite what you said about only the US being an area where you could have clowns and actors being elected, well, you, can, you have these other examples in other democracies. I would even say France at the time of Sarkozy. Sarkozy. Sarkozy was a very good communicator, very energetic on stage. But actually, when you look at the policy or the vision, there was nothing much. It was a classic right-wing conservative politician with no vision. So overall, being head of state, for good or bad, uh, has nothing to do with expertise, but everything to do with communication and entertainment. <laughs> So what do you think? What do you really think? That's the usual question we have at the end. I do believe that we, we live in times where the entertainers are more successful. So, and success defined as getting to the head of state. So you, you, you're getting to that position by playing to the masses. But the masses are not interested in, in uh, grayscale. They are not interested in understanding issues. And they are often not in the, interested in the long term they are interested in the short term. And this is exactly what will blow it up. I agree. Because if you're expert in something, then you have a long-term perspective, at least on some area, and you have uh, some healthy, healthy respect for complexity. If you're basically an entertainer first, then you, then you, the things you do best is playing to short-term sentiments, having, having black, white statements thrown out, and in worst case, even believing those yourself and driving them. So I do think, People that are only entertainers are bound to make bad policy and bad policy would turn into a disaster. I agree. That's why um, I do think the role has everything to do with expertise. But right now you're more likely to get there by being a good entertainer. I agree with you. I, I, I do think that most of the cases throughout history we have entertainers. Uh, and I do agree with you that it's a problem. The thing is that what, to continue your, your vein of thinking, the masses, uh, however condescending it is to describe them as masses, are not interested in data. Right? I love data, right? But journalists, the media is already completely math, like, um, how do you say? Uh, they hate maths. Like, most people hate maths. Like, they went to school, they just hate basic calculus. So, you very rarely get, like, precise data in even news articles and a good understanding of how things work even like, and there's a lot of mathematical mistakes by the way also by talking about percentages versus percentage points for instance yeah um, i get very much annoyed with with this all this to say most of the people don't care about this they hate technocrats and i love them obviously because i like reading things in detail but this is not what the people want so what do you want do you want a democracy with entertainers or do you want a dictatorship back to one of our debates where dictatorship doesn't have to be one man it can be a college of experts. It can be a college of experts, right? In fact, I'll give you another example. Um, I looked into the details because I was wondering, can we have a government in France or in any, any country in the EU where the ministers are foreign citizens? Hey, 
What if the best economist in the world is German? Maybe I can hire him on the government in France. Actually, you can't do this because they have to be citizens. How stupid is that? Right? Mm. I want to have the best experts. Uh, the, by the way, the interesting thing is, um, or an interesting thing that came my way was an article that I read recently where um, it was lined out that the current climate of entertaining first and horse race journalism where everything is treated as a sports metaphor in the end like instead of discussing issues you discuss how many points people are ahead in what election and whatnot um, the main the main the starting point of this has been the the rise of the 24-hour news coverage because if you do 24 hours news coverage uh, in tv or in radio you need to fill that with something and you need to fill it with something that people that that captures attention And we humans, we are bound to be captured by something that feels urgent, that makes us uh, getting in fight or flight mode. Yes. So either you need drama or a catastrophe yes. or something that is like a sports game. And, the, and that's this, why extreme messaging works also. Yeah. And make the it, risk of this is obviously, the risk of this is obviously what you, what then is going down the drain is talking about real issues, talking about the stuff we need to solve. This is why we do, we will never get uh, climate change solved before before it's a real catastrophe and we have to work uh, work it out. Because it's then a matter of life or death. We will never get the, the changes in demographics in, in rich countries solved before it's really getting getting down the drain. We will never we will never do anything about immigration until it really the shit hits the fan. Unless you have heads of states or 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 people who can get power and just, just go through with their vision despite not having popular support. I'll give you one example, which I think I've cited before. 1981, first time that you have a French, uh, a left-wing president being elected in France after the Second World War, Mitterrand. One of the promises of the campaign, which went against what the majority of the population wanted in France back then, was abolishing death penalty. But they abolished it within a few months. So I hope, I have hope, that we'll see here and there a few very strong-minded, strong-willed politicians who will manage to get elected because whatever, because they look young, because they're, they're new, because whatever. Like Macron mm -hmm. is new, right? And Mitterrand was the left-wing guy, even though he was an old politician already back then. And they will impose their will because they know this is the future that we should have, even though the, the population is not following completely. They voted them in power but have not, if you look at opinion polls, they're not in favor of all this thing. Uh, like maybe climate change or death penalty, whatever, what have you. One more example. I would hope also that politicians will, who know they're going to lose power, let's say Merkel, right? She knows, or, this, or the, let's say the CDU, imagine they, they have opinion polls which show they're not going to get uh, the, to lead the country after the next elections. They could pass all the reforms that are very unpopular, that, that will, will definitely make them lose, but they've got nothing to lose anyway. Right? Mm -hmm. They could pass things which are difficult to swallow but unnecessary. Pension reform, you know, labor law reform, whatever it is, you know, yeah. immigration stuff, whatever, I don't care. Like, but take advantage, you're still in power, you can make the difficult pills to be swallowed so the next government doesn't have to handle it and make it like a such a political fuss and infighting. Although in Germany and the UK, I find it much more respectable, the political mm -hmm. fights, than in France or other countries where it's much more personal and, and very much uh, dogma driven. By the way, I do think there are systems that invite expertise more than others. So I do believe that presidential yeah. systems are more bound to elect people that look good, sound good, good and point. are entertaining. Um, whereas if you have party driven systems where you have more levels of interaction, um, you, you have at least proven that you can, you can manufacture content and navigate an internal structure that's not watched all the time, for better or worse. That has its own downsides. That's but a it, good it, point. It means you, you're more likely to have at least picked up some skill on the way. And, and, and I guess um, a side effect of coalition governments, like in Germany, is that you're also inclined to find the best. You don't want to mm -hmm. work with people who are like, just for the sake of coalition, right? Yeah. So I that's a side effect it's not in, intended that way but maybe it, it's an interesting side effect of coalition governments in switzerland it's also working that way actually in a, in a rotating the president of the council i don't know what it's called in switzerland i don't know the system very well but they elect no, a different either. president every year every three years or whatever it is dear listeners tell us what you think as as always you can vote on our website to debate.eu 
and you can say you can use a thumbs up thumbs down you can leave comments you can email us and don't hesitate also to tell us what kind of motions we could debate about we have a few more in store for the next few weeks as usual so stay tuned for our thursday delivery of your next and your favorite podcast in the galaxy very thank much you. so thank you so much cheers bye 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 If we keep <laughs> rambling on about things like self-driving cars and Uber ratings and dating and apps, then we're never going to record. But that's what makes it so fun to do talk to you. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>